When I was young, every, uh, everybody in my field, or most people in my field, were very interested in how to stop cells in the brain from dying after traumatic brain injury. And there was a concept many, many years ago about excitotoxic events, so that once the brain was jostled, it would release these neurotransmitters, and one of them was glutamate, would cause this excitotoxic cell death. And people would describe that there was a critical window of time when you wanted to intervene and stop the cell death process. And it was very uh, popular from a scientific perspective. And then out of that grew this concept of um, apoptosis and programmed cell death, and then also what we call autophagy, which is an, a way of a cell actually causing death itself, and it happens in development all the time. And I thought that a novel idea was, uh, I'm not interested in what happens to the cells that die. I think, you know, we can try to work on that. I'm interested in what happens to the cells that survive. How do I make them more plastic? How do I have a, a five-year-old or a four-year-old or a three-year-old that has a devastating head injury that does so much better than somebody who's 25 years old or 30 years old? Uh, how can language shift from one hemisphere to the other after a major surgery? Why, why does that happen? How, how can I make that happen? And so to do that, <clears throat> we began to uh, study models of mild injury because we didn't want to induce cell death. We wanted to see what happened to cells that were exposed to a biomechanical load. And in severe head injured patients, we would put our probes or our scientific interest not in the contusion, but in the areas that were still surviving. And so consequently, inadvertently, we had these models of concussion that we were studying. And um, there was a gentleman by the name of, um, when the, the National Football League was run by Paul Tagliabue many, many years ago. And there was a guy um, who owned, not owned he, he, was, he was the um, agent for Troy Aikman, Steve Young, Warren Moon. Yeah, and he was down at uh, Long, uh, Newport Beach in, in California. And he had heard about this concussion issue. And he heard me give a talk with a gentleman by the name of Jose Suleiman. Jose Suleiman is the president of the World Boxing Council. And Jose Suleiman was very, very worried that, um, the, that the World Boxing Council wasn't doing enough to protect its fighters or to uh, recognize concussion or to stop a fight or how do you protect a fighter in between and how long should they stay out after they've been, their bell was rung. And so we started talking to them about this. And it wasn't so much that people didn't think something happened because they could see in people's eyes or in boxers, we knew uh, dementia pugilistica uh, for many years, punch drunk syndrome. But for the NFL and for those types of sports, they didn't understand how much was of, of this was psychological, meaning uh, players were just not sucking it up or they had lost the enthusiasm for competition, and how much of this really was a neurological event induced by this dysfunction. And in the, in the early 80s, we began to find ways to actually give them a picture of the human brain on how it responds following a concussion. And all of a sudden, once they saw that, this picture showed physiology. And then they, people sat back and said, yeah, there is something going on. And there probably is a reason for it to be, uh, to take a player out. But people don't realize that that effort started in the 1990s and it wasn't until 2009 that the National Football League came out with an official statement that concussion was part of the National Football League. And I was overjoyed when that happened because that, I knew that that would trickle down to college sports and to high school sports and it would trickle over into different areas like the military where the kids didn't want to be taken out of the battle or taken out of the field. But if Cutler had to take two weeks off for the Chicago Bears because he had a concussion, now it was cool to have a concussion and I have to stay out and it would protect them a lot better for that. So it was more serendipitous in how I got involved with concussion. I never really, it wasn't my plan. 
but it was the idea of looking at what happens to these cells that are exposed to injury that don't die.